When a formation headquarters deploys into the field, it usually splits into at least three elements, a main headquarters, a step-up headquarters, and attack headquarters, sometimes called the rover group. The hub of the main headquarters is the operations complex. This consists of six AFV 432s at brigade level and ten 432s at divisional level. The vehicles within these complexes are shown diagrammatically in your precy. The complex is surrounded by barbed wire with a sentry at the entrance. Within the perimeter, the vehicles are parked side by side and back to back with specially made penthouses to link them up. The ops vehicle is where minute-to-minute -minute operations are monitored and controlled. The vehicle is usually manned by the duty staff officer, the watch keepers and an operator. They have two secure radio nets to work, the forward and rear links, an insecure HF backup radio to hand should either of the VHF systems fail, and a Bruin telephone. Lastly, there's an intercom to the other vehicles in the complex. The commander's plans vehicle tends to be a haven of quiet. The int cell will keep all the maps up to date, and the commander can base himself here, monitor events, and yet not become involved in minor detail. The other vehicles in the complex are for the arms advisors, the intelligence cell, the engineers, and of course, the gunners. The G1, G4 side of the house needs to keep in touch with operations. At Brigade Main, the DCARS, BEAMI and BOWWOW set up their vehicles near to the Ops complex but not as a part of it and they thus have more freedom to come and go. The Brigade DCARS and the two SO3s work from a 432. They have a Bruin telephone but their radio nets are insecure since they are HF. You here see the operator using a MEROD birth transmission device these are ideal for logistic traffic since they can be pre-formatted and have a built-in error correction system. The BME works closely alongside the DCOS, as does the BOWWOW. Their specific roles will be discussed more fully during the logistic week. All formation headquarters have a COM head to give them access to the Bruin system. It consists of three vehicles. A radio relay vehicle, an automatic exchange and a message center. Remember that at brigade level these are in armored vehicles, but at division they're in soft skin box bodies. The makeup of a comm head was described during the communications presentation. A final group of vehicles makes up the headquarters. This is the echelon, where there's a cookhouse, a radio repair vehicle, the SQMS, the LAD section and so on. Around the outside of the headquarters, there are the defense positions and the visitor's car park. At brigade level, there is normally a Royal Pioneer Corps section to help defend the headquarters. At divisional level, it's usually a platoon. A formation step-up headquarters is really a main headquarters in skeleton form and was described to you during the presentation. Do remember, that a divisional step-up headquarters is permanently manned by staff officers, whereas a brigade step-up headquarters isn't. The third element that I mentioned at the start of this film was the TAC headquarters or the rover group. At divisional level, it consists of three 432s, one for the commander, one for the commander RT, and one for the commander engineers. They are not established at brigade level, except for the brigadier who has a hard rover 432. However, his gunner and engineer advisors normally produce 432s from somewhere. The three elements of a headquarters in the field that I've just described exist at both brigade and divisional level. At divisional level, there are two other headquarters that you should note. The rear headquarters, sometimes known as logistic headquarters, and the headquarters of the Divisional Administrative Area. Rear HQ is the focus for G1, G4 matters. Here, the Divisional DCOS and his staff work alongside the heads of service to command and control the logistic resources within the division. The headquarters is normally set up 
in a large barn complex. Rear headquarters and HQDAA will be covered in more detail during the logistic week. In this video, we will show you scenes of the Forward Ordnance Company and the Rear Ordnance Company. You will remember that there are two Forward Ordnance Companies and one Rear Ordnance Company in the division. The role of the Forward Ordnance Company is to supply a selected range of the most frequently used and important MT and technical spares required for the repair of equipment in the division and some general stores. They also hold a limited number of complete equipments, such as small arms, and these are held by the stores platoon. The technical section control the issues and receipts of stores. The computerized office for field force inquiries and records, COFA, now makes this a much easier task. COFA is used in the forward and rear ordnance companies. Each forward ordnance company can deploy up to two forward ordnance teams, or FOTs. A forward ordnance company would require a small village or a wood about one and a half kilometers square in which to conceal itself. Good circuits should be available and reasonable load-bearing surfaces. The forward ordnance company should be sited adjacent to an MSR. You can see that ordnance units have to be as prepared as any other unit for chemical attack, even if the remedy is rather different. Oh my god, look at it now. Help. Oh I know. Oh, oh. 